First of all, remove the T10 torque screw at the back of the master cylinder. And then remove the 4mm Allen key on the top of the master cylinder. Then when we remove the cap, there is a gasket in there which will come off. So make sure you just don't drop that. You will see already we have fitted on the steerer tube the mounting plate for the master cylinder. And supplied with this is two spacers. We generally mount one below just to give the master cylinder clearance from the bottom here. But it is your own personal preference. Uh, once we've got that on, we slide the bolt through there. Now you will notice there is a nut supplied and you may wonder what it's for. This is purely for mounting purposes so we can leave the cap off the rear when we want to thread the cables through. Then we just secure it in place but we will be removing it later and also make sure the master cylinder goes on the back side of the plate so it ensures it's in the right position for when your cable lengths are done. Now if you need to thread your cable or route it somewhere, best to do it now, fasten the cable in position, making sure it's not snagging anywhere, and just make sure your clips are in properly. Now with your two bolts and washers for each caliper, the washers are to stop the caliper from spinning when you nip it up, so make sure you use them, and it's really critical that the caliper is aligned exactly in the center of the disc. It's at the side of the disc here and here you're looking for. Sometimes if your gigs aren't that good, it might be worth using a torch or something so you can make sure you can see in properly. But if you can just double check the distance through the caliper and discs there and there, and also at the back side as well. Don't just rely on one side thinking the rear is going to be okay. Now when we come to securing the front caliper, one thing you must double check, as with quite a few post mounts out there, the angle when they're fastened up, the caliper can tilt. Now there are facing tools out there that can spot face to make sure this edge where they're fastened to is square to the disc. So the, the disc is there, the caliper is sat perfectly straight, not at an angle like that. So just double check, if you fasten it up, you've got it all set square, pull the brake on and it's rubbing and you look at the pads and they're tilted, that may mean that these aren't square. So once we have the caliper secured in place, you can adjust the cable angle if you wish to follow the fork leg a little better. If you just untighten it, not, not too loose, just slightly move it nip it up you won't need to bleed it again and in this case we haven't used the little clips come supplied we use a zip tie as with cross your shoulder can be hitting the fork and knock the clips out so we've also put one around the tire area as well once you've got the master cylinder and caliper in position we have tried to make the hose lengths as close as possible to fit most bikes without needing to trim as you can see you're allowed to run a nice long loop round there making sure it doesn't snag and the loop can come out here quite a long way without needing to shorten if for any reason you do need to chop and shorten the hoses it is best to remove the complete brake and carry out the same procedure as on our, all our other brakes for bleeding now we're just going to thread the inner cable through making sure you get the barrel adjuster in the correct place don't get it the wrong way around where the ball of the cable won't sit in so bob that in there i'd recommend using new cables it's uh, when you come to threading in the master cylinder it's hard to get a frayed cable through so you get that fitted same on the opposite side and then we'll fit the outer cable before we fit the outer cable make sure you stick a spike in there just to open it up so the cable will thread nicely through then pop your cable end on and I always fire a little bit of silicone lube just down the centre and then also just a small bit so now if we slide the cable into position make sure it's sat in properly now it's quite important that you do get the cable routing correct and it will probably become clearer once I get it in position so if I thread that 
through. As I say, with a new cable, it's nice and easy to thread through. If you're trying to use an old frayed cable, it may become difficult. But you sit that into the front of your adjuster there. And then once we fasten that in position, we'll pull the cable down and the same at the other side and we have a nice bend there. These cables are cut at 320 mil and it's 44 centimeters between this point and this point, just to give you a rough idea. We don't need a big long loop. We don't need a short tight loop, just a nice smooth curve. And it all should be working smoothly then. Now we have the bars all taped up nice and neatly. I generally put just three strands on there and then you can see that's coming from the underside, just in at the top. And then this allows these to be nice and free when the lock's turned. And then we'll go to fasten on the uh, brass barrel. So you may need to undo the grub screws, just unwind them with your Allen key to slide on right up to the master cylinder there. Then if you just simply nip them up, not full on tight, just, just nip them. Because what we want to do now is pull the lever just to settle the cable in. And as you can see now, if I pull back on that, you've got some free play. Now we can adjust the free play out with the adjuster at the front, but we'd like to get it somewhere near to start with. So I'll just give it a few pulls then. Now this is where it can, if you've crimped it too much, when you undo the grub screws, it can be un, a little bit un, oh, it's gone nicely as that. Sometimes it can stick in position. So if you pull tightly on the cable and push it back up and hold it with your fingers and then nip it again, Make sure you get both, and by rights, the rest of the free play will take out with the adjuster then. Nip them nicely. That's it. You, you must have a little bit of free play. If you can see, that's flexing slightly before it pulls the piston. If you've got it too tight, you'll pull the piston on, it'll block the master cylinder hole, and it won't allow the ped pads to self-adjust. So, and the same, if you adjust it too much, it pulls the piston in, which blocks the system, and you might also get brake pump up as well. So once we've got the uh, brass barrels on, we can then chop them as close as possible to the end, because when we put the cap on, if there's any stuck out, it may touch inside the cap and also hold the piston on. So if we chop, we need a good pair of cutters. For that, get rid of those. Now, as you can see, that one does need adjusting ever so slightly, and this is where the front eight mil adjusters at the front are used. So, if you can gently screw that out, and now when I'm pulling on the lever, it's just got a fraction of free play, and then it actuates the piston inside. That'd be perfect. That. So now we just simply remove the bolt and nut and then we will fit the cap, remembering to also use the gasket and little Torx bolt underneath. That will just hang freely. You may notice now that there is a gap between there and lots of free play, but it's purely because we have no bend on the cable. When the master cylinder is back in position, it won't matter. So we take the cap, the gasket, and put the uh, little torx bolt in the back first. Screw that up nice and tight. And then we're ready for the aluminium bolt. To fasten the top in there. Making sure that still your cables are all nicely rooted and that uh, your clamp on your steerer is straight. And this is why I mentioned before about making sure you've a spacer on there and it just keeps it away. And you may need to tilt it ever so slightly to get the position nice and straight. And that feels absolutely perfect. One thing using this system, don't get me wrong, it is really good but it's not a pure hydraulic brake. So it will never feel as good if you're using our brakes on your mountain bike, which is a pure hydraulic brake, 
it will feel slightly different because we are using cables but I'm sure once you get out there riding 